news, yeah. <clears throat> All right, what's up everybody? Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me. Canada, what the heck happened in Canada? What did you guys do? It looks as though Health Canada may be, albeit a little bit reluctantly, supporting vaping for tobacco harm reduction? Look, we'll get there in a second, but uh, Nick Guy the Science Man. Nick Guy the Science Man. L let me preface this by saying I am not a doctor or a scientist. I'm just gonna try to communicate this science in the best way that I know how, and the best way that I know how, I think is to rely on people who are smarter than me. I ran across this study via Jonathan Foulds over there on Twitter. Jonathan is a professor of public health sciences and psychiatry at Penn State University College of Medicine. And what we're looking at here is a randomized controlled trial where people who smoke cigarettes were either randomly assigned one of three views products or complete abstinence from both vaping and smoking. And although this is kind of like a vaping versus smoking study, it's important, I guess, to point out that the vapes being used in this study were from a big tobacco company. They were the pre-filled Views products. Although the difference between a pre-filled Views product and anything else out there, maybe even like a Cross 3 Mini, it's like, come on. It's basically the same. So what they were looking for in this study is called biomarkers of exposure or BOE through urinalysis. They look for things like uh, tobacco specific nitrosamines or volatile organic compounds. These are biomarkers of harm from combusting cigarettes. And looking at this chart, which shows mean change from baseline, baseline being biomarkers from a person who smokes cigarettes, the large lines going down represent a percentage reduction of those biomarkers. As you can see, the Views Solo is the hollow stripe and abstinence is the black stripe. And with the exception of the nicotine biomarker on the very end, you can see severe drops in all biomarkers across the board with the Views Solo people and the abstinence people having almost no difference. From their conclusion, the results from this study demonstrate that short-term switching from smoking to use of Views Solo leads to decreased exposure to tobacco smoke constituents. The reductions in toxicant exposure are observed among subjects who switched to view solo were also comparable in magnitude to the reductions observed in subjects who completely abstained from smoking, suggesting that the reduction in exposure for the view solo group was similar to that of the abstinence group for the biomarkers assessed. So basically, with the exception of nicotine the wonder drug on the end there, switching from combustible tobacco cigarettes to vaporizing your nicotine is as good for your body as switching from combustible tobacco cigarettes to nothing. Complete abstinence, comparable in magnitude. This is why we say things like hashtag switching is quitting because all of the available science shows that yes, switching is quitting. Science, you know, it's a hell of a thing. It can just be there and exist and be all in your face and say, here's what's going on with this. And people will still just look the other direction if they don't like it. I heard those things are worse for you than smoking cigarettes. Now, I don't know what the hell happened in Canada or with the official Health Canada organization because notoriously in years past, Canada, along with places like the United States and Australia and India, they've all been very, very, very hostile to tobacco harm reduction. It kind of makes sense as all of the countries that I just listed are privy to and party to the World Health Organization's Framework on Tobacco Control, the FCTC. For some reason, the World Health Organization will recognize harm reduction for literally every other substance and activity on earth just not for tobacco cigarette smokers. So to go against that, to go against the World Health Organization's framework on tobacco control is a pretty big deal. And in this completely shocking and maybe I would call thoroughly surprising move, the official Canadian government organization Health Canada sent out this tweet. Switching to vaping nicotine is less harmful than continuing to smoke cigarettes. While vaping has risks, evidence also suggests that vaping can help adults quit smoking. For more resources to help you quit, visit here. And if you click the link on that website, there's a video called What's the Best Way to Quit Smoking? And they mention vaping for quitting smoking again.
nicotine gum. What about vaping? While vaping products have not been approved in Canada as a quit smoking aid at this point, some studies have found vaping nicotine can be more effective than NRT or counseling alone. If you're unable to quit smoking using approved methods, switching completely to vaping can significantly reduce your exposure to the toxic chemicals from tobacco smoke. While many people eventually succeed by quitting suddenly without assistance, you know, cold turkey. I mean, it's their last suggestion before quitting cold turkey, but they said it, they put it out there. It's hanging out there, all pink and naked for everyone to see. Obviously, this is a really big deal. I think this is kind of huge for Health Canada and their messaging on it is flawless in my opinion. It's less harmful for you to start vaping than continuing to smoke cigarettes. And while they're not without risk, the evidence shows that they can help smokers quit. Boom, that's it. How do we get US FDA or CDC to say anything remotely like that? How then does Canada as a country justify these draconian vaping regulations they have? Canada has some of the weirdest, most backward ass vaping regulations, including an exorbitant tax on nicotine. This most recent excise tax on nicotine brings Canada into the ranks of places like California and Washington and Oregon and Ohio and New York and New Jersey, where it's actually more expensive to try to vape than it is to just buy cigarettes. This most recent Canada excise tax was meant to deter the youth use issue that apparently they may or may not have in Canada. If it's anything like the US youth vaping epidemic, then it's probably not as big of a deal as they're making it out to be, but this tax was meant to combat that. But all it really does is exorbitantly tax open vapor products and leaves pods and disposables basically alone. You know, the products that youth are using, pods and disposables, if they manage to get one from somewhere other than the black market, the most that they're gonna have to pay on it tax-wise is about 50 cents. But an adult like myself going into a vape shop to buy a 60 mil bottle of e-liquid, well, the tax on that's gonna be about 10 bucks. Bigger bottle, more tax. Smaller bottle, less tax. Regardless of how much nicotine content is in it, how does that make any sense at all? Shouldn't it be based on nicotine content? So maybe bottles with the highest nicotine content would be taxed the most, and the bottles with the least nicotine content would be taxed, you know, the least? Should someone be punished with higher taxes for lowering their nicotine content? Because that's the way it works in Canada right now. I don't know how Health Canada can look someone who smokes in the eye and say, yes, vaping is better for you and will help you quit, but it's going to be harder to get than cigarettes and it's gonna cost, it's gonna be more expensive than cigarettes. Oh, it's also gonna be completely unflavored. If it is flavored, it's gonna taste like cigarettes. Things still severely need to change in Canada in regards to their laws, but I do feel like Health Canada coming out and tweeting about this is a big deal. It, it really only takes a few dominoes to start falling before, before the whole thing falls down. Questions, comments, concerns? Hey, let me know down in those comments below because I'm here for the conversation. This has been a Grim Green video. Let's stay smoke free. Damn it, every single day. <coughs> it's like 10.30 and then I'm uh, just gonna smoke, so.